to another Apple reference. I'm going to do a few things to try and encourage myself to work very quickly. It's really fun to uh, push the envelope of what this process can do both directions. So my normal uh, thing is to do paintings that take two to three months to finish. But it's essentially the same technique we're learning right now. I just do it in a series of layers, usually one layer per day. But in the other extreme, it's fun for me to see exactly what the minimum could look like. What, is the sh what are the fewest shapes, values, and light or shadow situations that I need to tell the complete story? In this case, uh, two apples or one and a half apples, lit strongly from one side with a strong cast shadow. Uh, do not forget when you're making up your setup, make sure that you have the kind of extreme lighting situation that gives you both light and shadow. Okay, so what is the first step? Yes, I can hear you in the distance. You're saying, kill the white. Yes. I am again going to pick a transparent version of the lightest, of the brightest color I see, because ultimately I think I won't be happy unless that, tr that apple is as contrasting and bright as it appears to be. Okay, there we go. I'm going to lay it on again because I can tell right now already that that's not going to be bright enough for the apple itself. So I'm adding a little bit more of the same color where the apple will be just to make sure it's going to be as bright as I can make it. And then the rule I've mentioned many times, look around, there's bound to be another place where that same color will work. These are glazes. I'm scrubbing them in. Okay, and I did start out with a little pencil drawing, and you can do that as well, but um, it's usually not less necessary unless the setup is extremely complex. Okay, let me just, it looks like that goes out a little rounder like this. So a lot of the first steps are about kind of drawing really trying to get everything in the right place at the right time. Okay, now because this is very small, the next step is going to be blocking in, pulling out the lighter shapes with uh, whatever tool you have handy. I'm going to use my finger, a paper towel, and a Q-tip. I'm using a Q-tip because there's this awesome small one right there. Get a little, make sure I pull that out it seems like one of the most important lights in the picture. So there it is. And then up here, it clearly corresponds to that little V-shaped light. I want to get that in. And then the apple itself, I'm going to scumble in some very light values in there. Okay, oh, look at that. It goes a little like that. And then the light color goes right into the body of the apple itself, too, that white. So it looks something like that. Then I'm going to take my, you know, actually what I'm do, going to do is I actually see quite a lot of really a very blue, in other words, a very cool blue shadow around and behind the apples. So I'm actually going to kill the white with two colors. First with this bright red. Now I'm going back with a ultramarine blue glaze. I'm going to try to make kind of a more discriminant underpainting where I'm just underpainting parts of it blue. Okay, I figure I'm 
going to re. Soften that down with this. That white shape down there is so important. I'm kind of like trying to nail down the drawing as I go along. And I'm seeing this really beautiful and unusual, looks like half a heart. Curves are the hardest thing for me to reproduce. Takes a minute to get it right. Okay, I'm gonna stick with that for now. And I do see I would be great to have that blue ground a little bit over on this side too. You can see how that will help me. I'll worry about the shadow later, like the exact shape of it. I think I'll underpaint the whole area here, right up till we get to that beautiful little white triangle. And you run it out there. Sure, there's no hard edges where there shouldn't be, and we're good to go. Let's see, looks like the blue, the blue actually comes over here a little further. Put it in. And I think we're good with something that looks like this. Okay. Remember, the thin paint is usually relatively well blended. So I'm going to come back here and just soften up those brush strokes in some of the scrubs. Add a little blue there because I see it. Okay, so now we have kill the white and we did the block in with a Q-tip and a paper towel. One thing I see down here is that is ultimately going to be one of my lightest areas right behind the apple. So I'm gonna pull that out. It just reminds me, this is really where one of my light accents is going to be. Whoops, I lost the edge a little bit there. Okay. All right, so the first two steps are done. Next, we look for our dark accents. Well, oh my goodness, I see some very dark, dark surrounding pretty much the uh, apple on the left. One thing, do not assume that the shadow color on the apple is the same all the way around. It will definitely change. Like notice here at the top of the apple right there. Do you see that beautiful green light right there? So there's where the shadow color definitely changes. And then it gets kind of a deep, muddy red. And then look, look what happens down here. It changes again. So I'm going to try to make sure that my shadow color kind of corresponds with that wonderful change of temperature that I saw. First, I'm going to mix a general color that looks like I'll need the most of to depict that shadow. Okay, I'm mixing, I took some of the transparent red earth and mixed it with a little ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna add some quinacridone red to the dark, deep, deepest shadow, which is what I'm going for. Okay, doing color check on that. Um, it, I think my color I'm looking for needs to be a little bluer. So I'm going with a little bit magnesium blue hue. So checking that. That is definitely in the ballpark. The only thing is I feel like I have it so opaque that I won't be able to make a semi-transparent glaze out of it. The, uh, there we go. Okay. 
have you noticed that sometimes in a museum you'll see a brush stroke that looks like it was made very quickly? And I'm sure some of them are. But when you're working in this method with this process, each brush stroke is very deliberate and careful. Even if it's a visible, tangible brush stroke, it may lo look loose and quick, but it was probably done carefully with a lot of intentionality. Okay, I'm going to keep moving around with that color. Super dark. Dark accent, pretty much. Looks like it goes around the perimeter of this guy, too. And then it, it looks like it softly blends down there into the blue. And what happens to it up here? It looks like it fades into a red. Okay, that's probably pretty good. No blending for now. We'll wait till we get more red in and then decide when and where we're going to do it. Now it looks like that black, that dark shadow color turns real red. So I'm going to try to mix that real red shadow with transparent red earth and quinacridone red. Remember, transparent color is actually the brightest version you can get of any color. So we're going for a bright, bright red. It's a shadow, but it's very red. So we're going to try to make it see-through but make it strongly red and strongly dark. Okay. I think I blew my contour of the apple a little bit. I'm going to come back and trim it there on the right. It looks like it doesn't slant in enough. It should be going, you know, more like that. Come back and add blue there. Okay. That red, that super red, comes up here. There's a bit of it. And it looks like there's a bit right there. See how great it is to have a display because uh, rather than a hard copy photograph, because now I'm really concentrating on that apple on the left. And it's super easy just to blow it up, zoom in, and get a real clear picture of what's going on there. OK. Red goes right there. Now I'm ready to put in that delightful little green thingy in there. I don't know what it's doing there or how it turned green in that particular spot, but it looks quite delightful, so I want to do it. Okay, it is green. Muddy? Not really. I think that's it right there. Let's see if we got it. Okay. Tiniest blend. Oh, stop. Okay, what next? <laughs>